Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager. Namibia, land of the brave. Brave men and women who dedicate their lives to protecting a country of harsh terrain, ancient cultures and vulnerable wildlife. Namibian conservationists Dr. Rudy and Marlies van Furen are on a mission to travel the length and breadth of Namibia to meet these intrepid individuals and to witness the incredible work they undertake on a daily basis. These are the unsung heroes of Namibian conservation and these are their wild jobs. The Nankose Wildlife Sanctuary is approximately 3,500 hectares large, 54 kilometers outside of Vintuk, Namibia's capital city. It's home to a whole host of different wildlife species. Many of these animals have taken refuge at the sanctuary, having unfortunately come into conflict with humans. Nankose releases these animals back into the wild whenever possible. For those who are too habituated to humans or injured, Nankose provides an opportunity for these wild animals to thrive within a natural environment without the threat of persecution. Part of the sanctuary, Namibian conservationist Marlies van Vieren begins her day preparing breakfast for some rather special house guests. Breakfast. Yummy. Nankuse has three new arrivals needing Marlies's attention. So these are three baby cheetahs. This is Shiloh, Odyssey, and Wonder. And uh, their mommy, they she's still alive, but she's diabetic, and I'm now. The mum, in the meanwhile, and I have to try and raise them. The mother's diabetes means she cannot naturally produce milk. At such a young age, these cubs rely on Molise for everything. She not only has to feed them, she also has to play with them in order to develop their sensory skills. With Molise's care and a lot of hard work in the near future, there is hope for these cubs. After a tough start in life, they should grow up into magnificent cheetahs. We're going to give a baby kudu milk, her name is Stokies. Sometimes what happens is if it's a very dry year, the mums either dry up or they just reject the babies. And if they're lucky, they get found or they get killed by a leopard or cheetah. And she still drinks titi bottle. She's been with us now for two weeks. She's tiny. And I think she was a t like a newborn when we found her. And she's gorgeous. We do rehabilitate them and release them back into the wild. They go back into the wild very easily and they join other females. The females normally stick together and then the males will just come when it's mating season. But they do good. These baby warthogs come from different places. One's mummy's been hit by a car, one's mum's been killed by dogs, and the little tiny little one, whoop, uh, was found in a in a water trough on a farm and he's the only one that I still give bottle 
I'm trying to raise the warthogs without physical contact because if we want to release them um, in the future, then I have to make sure they're not aggressive towards people and they have to keep their distance, they have to be a little bit scared. So if you clap your hands, they have to run away. Um, otherwise, warthogs can be very dangerous. They get these huge tusks, especially the males. I've done it successfully three times already and I know that works 100% if you don't have physical contact. I think this little one's been the runt in the, in the litter because he's tiny, he doesn't want to pick up weight, he just doesn't grow like the other two. I think he's full. You are finished. Yeah. <laughs> Come, let's put you back in. Okay, for the rest of them. Come. Come, fucky, fucky. <laughs> Only one eating. Come. So body temperature, they lose a lot during the night. At night, they would go into a hole underneath the ground, lay with mommy, and they all snuggle and they're warm. But um, in captivity, that's one of the biggest problems is that they will die during the night, even in our hot summers. So we put them in a box with nice blankets in there and take them indoors, or in the winter, we will put electrical blankets in for them. And that works very well. Satisfied that the warthogs are happy, Marlies and her son Zachiel head over to what can only be described as any animal lover's idea of paradise. So this is the affection section and this is where I put all the different babies together. And that's basically my way of weaning them off of me. Um, and I think it's worse for me than for them because at this stage, if they're in here, they're not my full responsibility anymore. And uh, eventually from here, they get released. Okay. Good. Okay. So here, let's put your cage down and we can put the little ones in. Marlies and Zachiu have brought some baby genets to this enclosure for a day of play and exercise. So basically we put the babies in here in the day just to make sure they get enough sunlight and they make friends with the older ones. <laughs> Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager. Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager. So this is TJ, he's a yellow mongoose and he's from Vintuk, from a sport club. They basically moved a container and there was two little mong mongoose underneath the container. Mummy came in, grabbed one of the babies and ran off, but never came back for the other one. And my theory is just there was just too much movement and too many people. And uh, yeah, so I got him in and raised him with a titty bottle and he's doing brilliantly. He's a year old now, so he can be released. And basically, they, you find him everywhere in the central parts of Namibia. He can go. He will do very well. And then Gollum, he's a vervet monkey, and there's a big black market trade in Namibia. Um, they get caught in Angola and then imported at the, in the harbour at Wolfishby. And then people buy them as pets and they get tied up. And we end up with animals that are really social animals that need their family bond, that are totally isolated and luckily little ones like Gollum, some of them end up with us and end up in sanctuaries and they join other vervets and then they yeah, have a better life, a happier life. Thanks a few for the help. Go play, eh? Bye!
Back at the house, Marlisa's husband and fellow conservationist, Dr. Rudy van Vieren, is getting ready for a very important task. This camp is home to three very special Kalahari lions. Clarence, Winnie, and Nancy. As cubs, these three escaped from Itosha National Park in the north of Namibia. The rest of their pride was tragically shot. Too young to be released into the wild alone, the sibling lions found home here at the Nankuse Sanctuary. Okay, so this morning we need to clean this camp, this lion camp, which we try and do each month, once a month. The lions eat in here and obviously there's bones and feces and everything in there. Um, but it's not so easy to go in there and just clean it. I mean, you just don't waltz in there and pick up scat left, right and centre and, and come out again. One of the teams has to go around the camp and call the lions to the other side of the camp. Once the lions are there and they have them feeding them there and keeping them busy, we can softly go in here, quietly as possible, pick up everything that needs to be taken out and then come out again. If at any point you see you can't see a lion, then you say straight away, because there's three lions here. I'm going to ask you guys to watch Clarence, the male, so you can't get him mixed up. If you're not sure whether you can see him or not, just say you can't see him. While the Nankose team try to locate the three big cats and keep them on the opposite side of the camp, all Rudy can do is wait patiently. <laughs> come, 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 come! Oh, Rudy. <laughs> Hi, Rudy. Hi, Joe. Um, we've got Clarence, but Nancy, I don't know if Clarence has scared her off. She's in the bushes, but half the time we can't see her and she wanders off. And then we're trying to get her back down, but she's, Clarence is fine, but it, she's not. Got a bit of a complication now. We, to go in and um, be safe, we need to see all three lions. At the moment, we only have two visual. So I think the best is to go in there and see if we can find this other lioness and see where she is and what she's doing to assess the situation and make sure that we can go in. Rudy enters the lion camp alone to try and locate the missing lioness. Even though Rudy cannot see her, the odds are she's already spotted him. Okay, did you see her? So all three is there yeah, now. They're all on the left side. Oh, I see them. I see them. Go, 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 go. Having successfully located all three lions, their undivided attention must be kept with tasty meat treats. Okay, we have all three inside again. Okay, thank you. Finally. It is safe for Rudy and his cleaning team to get to work. They must hurry, as a lion's attention can only be kept for so long before they get curious. As a precaution, constant radio communication okay. is maintained throughout. Joe, just stand by. With the camp clean of bones and other lion waste, the team beat a hasty retreat through the gate to the safety outside, leaving the lion camp restored to pristine condition for its magnificent residents. Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintage Lager. Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintage Lager. Hi, how did it go? Very well, except for one female and her hormones. Everything is, uh, is done and it's clean. Okay, great. I want to release the high rack, so will you help me? Yeah, of course. Okay, let's go. 
It's this orphaned rock hyrax, or Dussie's, lucky day. She's old enough now to go and live free in the great outdoors. This rocky riverbed will make the perfect home for her. There are plenty of cozy caves for her to live in, and the neighbors seem welcoming. It's a nice place over there. Mm, this is a nice spot. Some water around. <laughs> Other dusties around. What more do you want? <laughs> Sunshine, dusties and water. Um, for me, it's difficult to, to release the dussy because I've raised her and took care of her for almost a year. But that was the main purpose of it and she's ready for release and she can make it, she's healthy. But uh, yeah, it's still like a little one of mine that I have to let go and it's really difficult. But it's much easier for species like the hyrax. Um, when we want to release them, um, there's not a lot of things that we have to consider. I mean, there's other dussies around, other hyrax around, and um, there's no threats to them here. If we think of cheetahs and, and leopards, you always have to consider the complications uh, of releasing them and the possible human-wildlife conflict. But with these guys, the worst case scenario is that somebody picks him up when they see he's tame. Okay. I think she'll be okay. Yeah, Let's I go. Think so too. It's even lower. <laughs> House, it's time for our three cheetah cubs to go on their first walk out into the bush. <laughs> Difficult to get all three to go in the same direction. Now we're taking a pee pee. My time and their time are not the same. Come. Okay, don't turn around. Go. We're taking the dog just as a dominant figure, and we've got some wild jackal here and uh, they're dangerous, so if I get some jackal on the road, they will kill the baby cheetahs. So he's protection for the babies until they grow up. Go, Mommy! <laughs> Go! Go! To see them do this is just heartwarming. I, I can't explain how happy and blessed I am to see them grow a little bit more so we can turn back. We're going to take them out daily. They're going to walk for an hour and for now, a day, and we're going to do it at the coolest time of the day, evenings or early mornings. The fitter they get and the bigger they get, um, we'll do it more often. We didn't go very far, but uh, for a little baby cheetah that's been cooked up in the house, this is very far and they're really exhausted, so I'm going to take big long journey back home now. So go, go on Barbas. The tired trio return to the house after their adventurous evening. An important first taste of life in the wild. In 
inside the house, dinner is served. But wherever there's a fanfiren, there's bound to be an animal close by. Tonight's dinner guests are some orphaned baby baboons. For the first couple of months, they stay with us in the house, they sleep with us, and it's really important for them to have that social um, bond with us and also physical contact, because that helps them develop and also fit in very well when they go to the groups. So it's just, it's good for them to have that physical contact. But it's a challenge. Must say, for the four of us, it's a challenge to have two extra babies that doesn't sit still. <laughs> After a tiring day, the family and their furry friends are ready for bed. Marlies and I got married 15 years ago. These baboons are the most effective cheapest contraceptive method in the world and after the 300th baboon that came through this bed I said to my lease we need to make a plan now so we bought this bed it's three kilometers by one kilometer and she sleeps on the western side of the bed and I sleep on the eastern side of the bed and I sleep alone it's not that bad <laughs> so after a long day with a lot of baboons and nappies and titty bottles and mealworms and feeding so many different animals and get in bed in the evenings like this I realize every day I'm right. blessed because just to be able to do this with my family and share it with them it's a privilege good night <laughs> Coming up in next week's episode of Wild Jobs Namibia. Rudy and Marlies travel far and wide to find out more about Namibia's most vulnerable wildlife and those people who protect it. Wild Jobs Namibia is proudly brought to you by Vintuk Lager.